It's nice to see you all here, and I'm so glad we're doing online worship. I want to say welcome, and my name is Jerry, and I'm so happy to be with you. So why don't we get started? Beautiful morning. Let's worship the Lord. Come on. Everybody stand up, and let's sing this song together. Blessed be your name. Who you are is 
for this wonderful morning. I pray that, Lord, that we would get to know you more and learn of you and that we would trust in you, God. Help us not just be the people that listen to your words, but we will be the one who obeys your word. We will bless our meeting this morning and we praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. boy, it's kind of hot in here, uh, wearing suit, kind of suit, but uh, uh, I'm just really glad to be with you, to have this online worship, and uh, today's topic is Jesus, that's right, I can never get enough of Jesus, because he is everything, and, and so today we're going to be talking about Jesus' return to heaven, and that's found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through 20, and also in Acts chapter 1, verse 1 through 11. So let's open up your Bible, and uh, if you have your Bible, why don't you open it up to Matthew chapter 28. We also looked at 28 last week as well. Uh, we're just gonna continue Okay, so uh, do you have your Bible? Let's turn our Bible to Matthew 28, starting from verse 16. Let me read it. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authorities in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commended you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. Okay, that is Matthew, and uh, we're going to read Acts chapter 1, but we're not going to read the whole passage, but we're just going to read a few verses here. Okay, starting from verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intensely up in the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Amen. All right, so that is our passage for today. So uh, if you could recall, um, Last week was an Easter, and so, and two days before Easter was a Good Friday, and we talked about one of the most important topics, which is the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, he died on the cross, and, uh, you know, he carried all the sins of the world, and he dies, and he, he says, it is finished, meaning that God had paid full price for sins of the world. Jesus has paid all on the cross for all the sin. And then we talk on Sunday that Jesus was raised back to life again, which means that he has conquered the grave. That death has no power over him. They, death cannot hold him down. 
He was raised back to life. He has power over death. And so we see this incredible work of God, and now he's pretty much finished earthly work, and so he is now ready to go into heaven. So what, what does he do? He spends 40 days proving to disciple in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, talks about how Jesus stays, after his resurrection, he stayed for 40 days before he was taken into heaven where he belonged, where he came from. So um, if you recall from last week, we talked about Matthew chapter 28, right? Uh, nobody, 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 right? We talked about angels saying to, to both Mary, who came to see the, the Christ who, who was crucified, who was dead. They came to see the dead body. The angel says, are you looking for Christ? Who is crucified? Well, there's nobody, nobody there. <laughs> and uh, also we saw how Jesus encountered Mary, both Mary, uh, when they were running to tell the other disciple, Jesus meet them personally. And so for 40 days, he stuck around and teaching them and uh, eating with them. And I told you, you cannot eat if you don't have physical body, meaning that Jesus' uh, resurrection is a physical resurrection, and he he spends forty days, and now he's taken up. And as we read, um, that's what we see. So again, I want you guys to really understand this. Jesus has finished his ministry. Jesus came to finish his mission. Jesus came and finished his work. And what was his work? What was his work? Well, his work was to fulfill all the prophecy, which is about 400 plus prophecy that was made in the Old Testament. He fulfills it, every one of them, such as where he was gonna be born, um, kind of life that he will live, and, uh, and the ministry that he will be doing uh, on the cross, on, on the resurrection. All of this is prophesied 500 plus years ago, it was prophesied and he fulfills every, every one of them. Over 400 prophecy was fulfilled through Jesus. Not only that, he obeys the law of God perfectly. The greatest law. What is the greatest law? Someone asked, how can I go to heaven? Well, you obey the greatest uh, commandment and then you, you go to heaven. What was that greatest law? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. And second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now Jesus fulfills that greatest commandment, with the most important commandment. Jesus obeys them all. Why? Because you and I cannot obey that. Jesus obeyed and the perfect righteousness and he gives us his righteousness to us. And that's how we could go to heaven. Without his righteousness, obeying all the law, we can never be going to heaven. And he obeyed it for you. So he fulfills that, and uh, he bore the sins of the world, and he goes on the cross, and he was punished. He, the judgment of God the wrath of God was poured upon him and he was punished. Which means that that is something that you and I as a sinner should be punished. We should be separated from God. The wrath of God, we talked about that. It means that you're separated from God. And that's what essentially hell is. Hell is a place where there is no presence of God. And Jesus experienced that on the cross. The wrath of God was upon him. He dies. He suffered and dies. And then on a third day, he was raised back to life again. He conquered the grave. And he overcame the power of death. Then that means that we too have a hope of a resurrection. That we too will be resurrected. Though we die in, in our physical, that we will be raised back to life with God and our body will be glorified and we're going to have a heavenly body. Well, that's going a little too much, but 
What the, all that does, the word, earthly ministry of Jesus, is to prove to everybody that he is the son of God. That he is the savior of the world. Friday, last Friday, if you haven't seen the video that I made, I want you to go back and watch the video, Friday night service. And I talked about the story that people, Jesus wants to ask disciple, who do people say that I am? And people were, uh, the disciple began to speak and say, hey, they think you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah. Or other prophets and they had no idea people had no idea who Jesus was because Jesus never claimed to be the prophet Jesus never claimed to be the the good teacher or Jesus never trying to be a miracle worker none of those things Right, and but people have different opinions about Jesus, and Jesus turned and says to his disciple, "Who do you say that I am?" To his disciple, and Peter stood up and said, "You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God," and that was the right answer. That is exactly who he is. He is the Messiah. He is the Christ, the Anointed One. He is the Son of the Living God, and that's what he claimed to be. Remember, Jesus says something like this. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. If you know me, you know the Father. In fact, Jesus says, Father and I are one. He's making himself as the Father God as to be equal, that they're one. One of the, the uh, most... Uh, Difficult thing for people to, to, to receive is the what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to Father except through me. No one could go to the Father except through me. Only he is the truth, and he is life, and he is the way. The only way you could go to heaven, the only way you could get to God. The Father is through me, Jesus says. There's no other way. He's the way. So, a lot of people kind of have a misconception about what Jesus is. And, uh, you know, they think they're, he's a great teacher. He never claimed to be just a great teacher. He, he, people think he was a, a religious uh, prophet. Well, he never claimed to be just a prophet. Uh, there's a song that says Waymaker, the song, popular song right now. And they says something like, you are the miracle worker. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is, who... wait a minute. I like that song and I think that song is good. But sometimes you get the wrong idea that Jesus is a miracle worker and that's all that is. No, Jesus is the son of God. He is the Messiah, that he is a savior of the world. He is God in flesh. He came on earth, on flesh. Jesus is God. That's what he claimed to be. And that's who he is. So today, I was, uh, so Jesus' earthly ministry was to prove who he is. And after all the earthly ministry and what we read today, what we read today is, is his final moment that he spent on earthly ministry. And then we'll see that he goes to heaven. And so today we're going to be talking about that star from Matthew 28. So it says in Matthew 28 verse 16, then 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. So Jesus is in Galilee, and they went to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. And when they're there, Jesus came to them, and they worshipped them. But some doubted. Verse 18, he says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And Jesus says to them, All authority... 
of heaven and earth is given to me. That he is a Lord over heaven. He is a Lord of earth. What does it mean? Well, authority. Uh, I could think of authority as like having a key. Like you have a key to your house. And you could only get to your house with, with that key, right? Um, so basically, uh, uh, you have a right as a person who lives in that house. You have the key. You have the authority of whoever could come in and who is not to come in. Well, if it's your friend or if it's your, someone you know and they, that you, uh, your family, you let them in, right? Because you know them. Right? But there are people that you would not allow them to come in the house. You have that authority because you have the key. They don't. They cannot get in. Right? So what Jesus is saying is that I have the authority of heaven. I am the authority of heaven means that I have the keys to heaven. And I choose who to come in and who not to come in. He controls that. He's not obligated to let anybody in. He is the owner of heaven that's where he, that's his house that's his place so he allows people to come in and out right uh, so who could come in well based upon relationship there are people who says lord lord bible says not everyone who says lord 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 will enter in heaven did you know that there are people who says you know i've done this work for you, I have cast out demon in your name. I have done this, and they they would say, "Lord, Lord, let me in." And Jesus would say to them, "Depart from me, I do not know you." There are people who says, "Lord, Lord," but that doesn't mean anything. Just professing that Jesus is Lord, anybody could say that. Even even demon knows that Jesus is the Lord. And that's why he hates him so much, right? And so it's not about professing it, but is he truly your Lord? Heaven, all authority in heaven is given to me. And not only that, all authority in, on earth is given to him as well. That means that he's a Lord over every nation. That everyone, you know, that's why we go on mission. When we go to mission, we're telling people, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. He's a Lord over your life. And we share the gospel message to them to, to declare that Jesus is Lord. So Jesus has proven now that he is a Lord. He has conquered the grave. And he has paid the penalty of all the sin was paid in full. So he is a Lord. Before we talk about verse 19, we have to really capture verse 18 that says, basically, is he the Lord over your life? And then we could talk about verse 19. Then, therefore, go. Okay? So, therefore, go means that so it's referencing that Jesus is Lord. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Right? And so, first thing that we need to establish that is that Jesus is the Lord. Amen. Uh, verse 19 says, uh, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of age. Okay, so what's going on here? Before we are, do what Jesus is telling us to do, we have to really think about it. He's saying to make disciples. Make disciples of all nations. By going, by baptizing, and by teaching. Okay, so that is the key in this passage. The key is to make disciples of all nations. We are to we are called, or Jesus calls his disciple to make disciples. Question: What is disciple? What does it mean? What disciple means is that you are a student, that you're making Jesus as your teacher. 
So the question is, is that is Jesus teacher? Before we go out and make disciples, is Jesus your teacher? Are you learning from Jesus? Because that's what disciple is. One who learns from Jesus. The word is methotheus. Methotheus in Greek means disciple, okay? And I don't know if you remember, we, uh, we had a memory verse, remember? Uh, we memorized a verse uh, of Matthew uh, chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Maybe some of you could say it. Uh, it says something like this. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And then he says... Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me. That learn, the word learn there is methodeus. It means disciple. When we say we're disciple of Jesus, that means that Jesus is our teacher and I'm learning from him. Every aspect of my life, whether it's a relationship, whether it's, it's my future, my career, whether it is my pocketbook, money, whatever it is. Jesus is my teacher. I am learning from him. That's what makes a disciple, one who is learning from Jesus. That's what uh, Methodius disciple means. That we are, Jesus is my teacher. Jesus, I am learning from Jesus. Second thing I want you to know about what disciple means is that... Uh, Disciple is one who confesses Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. In fact, the Bible says here, uh, it says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So, baptizing. Okay? Uh, I don't know if you guys are baptized, but uh, we, in our church, um, we allow people to get baptized when they're 14 or 15. That's the age that we all came out with. At, and so in high school department, they have, as soon as 14, uh, people could be baptized, which I look for for you. And I believe that you want to obey God and be baptized. Um, but what is baptism? Baptism is simply public announcement or public declaration Publicly, you're confessing, confessing your faith, okay? And that you once lived this life uh, uh, without God, and now you've you received Jesus into your life, and now he's become my Lord, and I follow him. So my life now, I will be following him. I am confessing that in front of the people, and then you get into the water, which means you're all alive, and you come back to life, and that means that you're now raised back to life with God in Christ. Now you have this new life. And so baptism is really is a confession. A disciple then is a one who confesses. Each morning, they get up, and they say, Jesus, you're my Lord. You confess that, Jesus, you're my Savior and Lord, and I will follow you. Many people say Jesus is Lord, but they don't follow what he says. There are people who say, I'm a Christian, just to label as a Christian. I'm a Christian, but they don't, when we look into their life, they don't follow what he says. In fact, they do with the way they want to do, or they would choose, they would decide on the based on what they want instead of what God wants. There used to be a slogan that, that is in the past, it's called WWJD, which stands for What Would Jesus Do? What would Jesus do in, in, in in my situation. Decision you need to make. You ask God, God, Jesus, you're my Lord. That means that I follow you and I obey you and I, I will choose what you say. If God, this is what you want. Jesus, if you want this, then I will follow you. Even though how much I like this and how much I love this, I want to because you're my Lord. 
Simple as that. Guys, we need to profess each and every day. Is Jesus Lord over your life? Is he getting his way? Does Jesus, do you obey Jesus? Which is my next point. Disciple is one who is one who obeys Jesus. It says, teaching them, verse 20, teaching them to obey everything I commanded you. The teaching them to obey. So disciple is one who not only uh, learns from Jesus, not only who profess that Jesus is Lord, but one who also obeys. That's what it means. God has established Jesus Jesus has proven to everyone that I am the truly Savior of the world. Look what I have done. I have died on the cross and I was raised back to life. Now all authority is now given to me. And which means that he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is the Lord. That one day everyone will bow down and recognize that Jesus is Lord. That's who he is. And if we are believer and we say we follow Jesus, when we say we're disciple, then that means that I need to learn from you, Jesus. I am a disciple means that you're my teacher. I need to learn from you. So each and every day, we try to learn of more of Jesus and follow his way. Secondly, we profess, okay? So... Each morning you get up and you say, Lord, is it going to be my way or your way? Lord, have it your way, Lord. Disciple is one who obeys Jesus. Because they recognize he is the Lord. Okay? If that is who you are, you're a disciple. If you choose him over your own wants and your ambitions, your desire. Choosing what he wants is truly a disciple, one who follows Jesus. When that is established in Acts chapter chapter eight, uh, chapter one, what we find is that Jesus telling them, you are now my witness. You are going to be my witness. But wait, there is something that I want to give you. And that is a gift. And the Holy Spirit will be given to you. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and Judea and all Samaria to the ends of the earth. What Jesus is now telling us to do is that he already established he is the Lord, and we believe that he is the Lord, then if we believe that, we are to go and make disciples. Just like we follow God, we follow Jesus, we, we obey Jesus, we learn from Jesus, we allow people declare to the nation that he is the Lord, and that they can also follow him. So Jesus called everyone, one of us, to go and make disciples of all nations, to be the witness in the world. And then, and then Jesus ascend into heaven. This is the final word of Jesus speaking to you and me. This is what Jesus wants us to do, is to proclaim this good news and what Jesus has done and to follow him and to love him. But before we tell other people, we have to establish, again, is Jesus Lord over your life? Are you learning from Jesus each and every day? All aspects of your life, are you learning? You have to establish that you are the one who... uh, you profess or confess 
that Jesus is Lord. How about every morning you get up, declare, if he's truly the Lord, if you really believe that he's the Lord, you declare in the morning, say, Jesus, you're the Lord over my life, and Jesus, you're the Savior of the world. You need to declare that every morning, if that is true. Again, disciple is one who learns, one who confesses, and one who obeys. I know we're going to have a hard time obeying God sometimes because we're so torn by our flesh and what we want and what God wants, and sometimes it's, it's kind of hard, but I want you to know it's a, it's a process. Okay, it is a process. As we more know about God, but we learn more of Jesus, then guess what? It gets better. Okay, when we come to understand who Jesus is, see, that's the point, guys. It's not what you do more than what you know and understand about Jesus. We need to understand greater things of, of, of Jesus. Jesus one day visited those two sisters who, who was, uh, uh, opened the house for him, Jesus, and his disciples. And when they came in, and one of the sisters named Mary, she sat by Jesus to listen to what Jesus had to say. But the other one is Martha. And Martha is the one who is just going around the house, making sure all the food is ready, and she's working hard. And then she's frustrated because she sees her sister sitting by Jesus listening. And so this Martha went to Jesus and, Jesus, don't you care? Tell my sister to come and help. There's a lot of work to be done here. And Jesus says, hey, Martha, she has chosen the, the better thing. She has done the right thing. You see, it's not so much a work that we, we're going to project for God, uh, to pursue God. That is important. But that only is motivated, and that only comes by learning to know Jesus more and more. If you know more of Jesus, this becomes something that we want to do, and it just, it just outflows in our life. Yes. So I want you to remember that. Um, and let us close now, and let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this word. God, I thank you. You have established to the disciples and to the world that you are the Christ, Son of the living God. You are truly the Messiah. And God, we have come to you. Sometimes, Lord, we just, we're just labeled as Christians. And we do not make you a Lord over our lives. You are in our life, but Lord, you are not the Lord, and we become the Lord. And Lord, I pray that Lordship will be changed. You have established in the world that you are the Lord. Let it be established in our own life that you are the Lord. So every morning when we wake up, Lord, may we, wanna, we want to learn more of you. Lord, every time we wake up, we pray. We confess that, Lord, you are the Lord over our life. Lord, every time, Lord God, in our life, in our situation, uh, we would choose your way over our own ways. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you all for this online worship that we're doing. But remember, every time you wake up, Pray and say, Lord, you are the Lord over my life. Every moment you, you wake up, um, learn to help me to know more and more of you. Those are the prayers you need to pray each and every day, and that I would obey you. Um, online giving is not done in our department, but uh, make sure you give offering to your parents that they could deliver to the church. And also, we have Zoom meeting going on. We had uh, 94 people join us last week. And we had a wonderful time of Zoom meeting. And we're doing that this week. So tomorrow, uh, today, um,
just log in and uh, and we'll have a wonderful time together. God bless you and I love you. Bye-bye.